Little mathematicians, I want you to start this lesson today by listening to a picture book. This picture book is called The Animals Would Not Sleep. This is going to help us start our learning today in mathematics. Enjoy the picture book, The Animals Would Not Sleep. Yes. The animals were making a ruckus. A ruckus is a lot of noise and jumping around. And certainly they are. Look at them. They are everywhere. On the walls, flying off the lamps. It's getting close to bedtime, Marco's mom said. Time to put away your toys. You mean to sort the animals, Marco said? That's what a scientist would do. Marco made signs for his baskets. He put each animal where it belonged. Flying animals, there's the flamingo. Swimming animals, octopus, frog. Animals that move on land. That's the rest of them, the teddy bears, the giraffe, zebra, the dinosaur. But the animals would not go to sleep. Fly, swim, slither, crawl, leap. They egged one another on until not one remained in its container. Oh dear, what is Marco going to do now? Perhaps they just weren't tired enough yet. Marco gave them a little more time to get their wild out. Marco, his mom called, almost ready. Um, almost, Marco called back. Marco studied his menagerie as a good scientist would. Maybe the animals would have better behavior if they were organized differently. He made new signs and tucked the animals in their appropriate baskets. Mostly brown, black and white, colors of the rainbow. But Zebra was upset. While he didn't mind sleeping next to Stingray and King Snake, he missed his friend Giraffe. He started crying. Marco felt terrible. You're probably just overtired now. That's why it seems like such a big deal, he told Zebra. Does that happen to you too? It happens to me too. When you're so tired and nothing's going right. He dumped all the animals out. Maybe he should group them by size. So medium-sized zebra and medium-sized giraffe could be together. It was hard to fit the large ones into their basket. But Marco squeezed them all in. He started to put his pajamas on, but he didn't get far. A terrible sound was coming from the basket labeled large. Marco peered inside. I'm smushed, Dinosaur said. My spikes are bent. I'll never fall asleep. Ah. Me neither, said Dancing Flamingo. My neck is cramped. It did look uncomfortable. Plus, I miss Rainbow Bear, Dancing Flamingo added. Well, this isn't working. What's going on in here? Marco's mother asked. Are you getting ready for bed? I'm trying, Marco said, but my animals aren't cooperating. Now he heard squeaking and buzzing from the small animal bin. What's going on in there? Marco asked. Baby Mouse wants his mommy, Spotted Dotty explained. Also, it's too cool for us in this big drafty basket, Turtle added. Two more minutes, Marco's mother called. Marco had to think fast. Being a scientist, he was used to coming up with ideas and thinking outside the box. He dumped the animals back onto the floor. Can I just sleep in your bed tonight, whined birthday bear. Yellow bear started crying for no reason at all. Everyone was getting cranky and time was running out. What's Marco going to do? Marco knew that good scientists care about their animals. Helping them feel safe and cozy was important. He also knew that sorting could still work. 
He placed the large animals at the foot of his bed where there was plenty of room to stretch out. He placed the medium animals along the wall. And he placed the small animals behind his pillows where they would feel snug and warm. He leaped into bed just in time. Oh, they look cozy. Everything was quiet and still when his mother came in to say goodnight. Good night, Mama, Marco said. Sleep tight, Marco, said his mom. Looks like you got everyone sorted and settled in. Yeah, well, that's what a scientist can do. Later on that night, look at how cute they look all cuddled up super close together. That was a great story. I love using picture books as a part of our mathematics lessons together. In this story, I noticed a little girl had to sort some toys. How were the toys sorted? Can you remember? I want you to stop for a moment and talk to somebody nearby about how the little girl sorted the toys in this story. What did she do? How did she group them and sort them? I wonder what you noticed, little mathematicians. Here's a little bit about what I noticed. I noticed that she sorted them into flying animals, swimming animals, and animals that can move about on land. But then I thought of another way that she sorted them. I noticed that she also sorted them using colours. She had some animals that were mostly brown. She had some animals that were black and white. And then she had a bunch of animals that were with all different colours. Rainbow. They had an assortment of colours. So that's two different ways she sorted them. The way they move. The colours that they are. Were there any other ways that she sorted the animals in this story? Were there other ways that she grouped the toys? Can you think of any other ways that she sorted the toys in this picture book?